Hello and thank you for watching. This is Eric with Low VA Rates and today we are going to be talking about what really caused the housing collapse and mortgage meltdown. Now I'm going to give you a hint. It was definitely not VA hybrid arms. Now you may think I have an agenda. I do. My agenda is to educate you on what really caused the housing collapse. Yes, I love VA loans. Yes, I work at low VA rates. And so, of course, I'm going to give you all of the good news about VA loans. But what I do promise you is today we're going to talk about what really happened. What caused the housing collapse? Why did the housing market go from such a high to such a low so quickly? And what I do promise you is we're going to stick to the facts. I promise you that. So let's jump right into it. First of all, loose borrowing and lending standards were at the forefront of this collapse. At the very start of everything, it all started with this. Very loose and easy underwriting guidelines. Also, money became very cheap. Interest rates were at all-time historical lows, and they kept going lower and lower and lower. Greed, both by Wall Street and by Main Street. Okay, Greed was right there, and it was Main Street. That's you and me. Wall Street are the big bankers. Main Street, those are all of us. And uh, greed played a huge role. Subprime loans, which we'll go over, also played into the crash, as did certain aggressive arm loans. Specifically, option arm loans were the worst. Now, I can tell you right now, the option arm loan is the furthest thing away from a VA hybrid loan possible. They have nothing in common other than the fact that they both have an adjustable rate portion to them. And we'll talk about that a bit more here down the road. So let's start trying to think, what were our parents thinking when they bought a house? What were our grandparents thinking when they bought a house? So let's go back 25 to, to 50 years. Okay, When our parents were buying homes, things were way different than they were um, and then they are even today. But they were much more different than they were from about 2000 to 2005, 2006, leading up to this housing collapse. First of all, you had to have no less than 20% down payment to get into a home. Now, I'm not a historian. There could be the chance that there were some loans available back then that didn't have a down payment or it was less than 20%. But I got to tell you, go talk to anybody that bought a home 25 plus years ago and see if they had a 20% down payment and let me know what they tell you. It will be yes. Also, nobody back then thought that they were entitled to some sort of a home. They earned it through saving over time and stocking money away. Okay, And when they did get to the point where they had earned the ability to buy a house, they started out small within their means, and then they moved up into bigger homes in the future. And everyone tried to borrow as little as possible. Okay, A lot of people had much more than 20% to put down because they didn't want the bank lending them all of the money. And in addition to that, they tried to get out of their home uh, out of their home loan as quickly as they could. Most people were getting one standard type of mortgage. You walk down to the bank, you sign some paperwork, you got a mortgage. I mean, there there are so many mortgages. I've been in the mortgage industry for about 15 years now. I couldn't tell you all the different types of mortgages and loan types that are out there. So things were much more simple time back back in the day. Okay? Now let's talk about the current mindset, at least prior to the housing crash. I will say that we've done a pretty good job of changing our mentality because of the pain we went through in this housing collapse, but it all starts with me, 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 entitlement and greed. That's where we have kind of come in this country, and it has caused a lot of pain. Um, this is what our kids are likely to think and what we are likely to think if we don't start changing our views and our philosophy on who should be buying houses okay first of all no money down loans those are expected now as I mentioned I love VA loans VA loans still have no money down to buy a house there are certain entitlements and certain benefits that veterans both men and women of the armed forces active or retired should get that civilians like me shouldn't get and a no money down loan is one of them if it's done with some responsibility and the VA makes these no money down loans available but they make sure that you're able to afford the house you're getting we all think hey I live in America I pay taxes I should have the right to buy a home 
Most of us want to try to keep up with the Joneses. We've all been guilty of it at one time or another. we got to get away from that. Quit worrying about what everybody else is doing and just worry about ourselves. And again, this I'm not preaching today. I'm just letting you know all of the things that I have seen play into this housing collapse. A lot of us don't care how much our loan is. We don't care what our balance is. As long as we can afford the monthly payment, who cares how much we're borrowing? And we all think that we should all be approved for a loan of some sort. Well, if I can't get approved for VA loan, then I should go FHA. And if I can't get FHA, then I should go USDA. And if I can't go USDA, then I want to get a reverse mortgage, or I want to get a conventional this, or I want an Obama bailout loan. You see what I'm saying? We all feel like the banks owe us an, uh, some sort of a mortgage. Okay? Um, th th there's just got to be a loan for all of us. That, that's just that's – just, I hear that all the time. So here's – Here's where it gets very interesting. You see this picture over here where there's just money falling from the sky? That's how it felt. That's how it felt as banks started lowering their standards for borrowing or lending money to people. They made it very easy. Um, this is no joke. It was possible for somebody with a 520 credit score to go out and get a million-dollar loan. Now, today that seems ludicrous and just insane, but this was normal pre-housing collapse okay employment was no longer that important and very few times it was not even verified no underwriter no loan officer no banker called to make sure you actually worked at the home depot or that you actually worked at uh you know black and decker or gm or wherever you worked you could actually make up how much money you were earning we called these liar loans. We didn't do them. And I'll get into that here in the, in, at the end of the video about my history and where I've come from and what I've done. But it was okay to just state your income. The loan program was called a stated income loan. There was even a stated stated loan where you could state your income and state your assets. And nobody verified this. Banks didn't even care that they were lending you more than your home was worth. There were loans called 125% equity loans where they would lend you, the bank would lend you 125% of your home's value. So if your home was worth $100,000 with an appraiser, the bank would lend you $125,000. Crazy? You bet. Was that reality? It sure was. And down payments became a thing in the past. Every loan from VA, FHA, um, conventional, it didn't matter. Everybody was offering no down payment loans. They just didn't care if you had your own skin in the game or not. Now, how did all of this loose lending affect the housing market? First of all, as more and more people were able to buy homes, prices for those homes went higher and higher and higher. We got into this really nasty cycle because as prices went higher and higher and higher, historically, less and less people should have been able to buy homes and it kind of cooled the market down. But people were just borrowing more and more and more. And, and, and they were able to borrow more and push prices higher and higher and higher. So it just got worse and worse and worse. Okay, and what this caused was some fake home appreciation. And this was caused by this artificially inflated home prices. It was like blowing on a balloon and just blowing it up and blowing it up and blowing it up, thinking that at some point it's going to pop, but it, yet it never would. It just kept stretching and stretching. And it got to the point where, most importantly, we had people who had no business buying homes. They had no ability to repay the mortgage, and many of them didn't even have any intention to pay off the mortgage or pay or even make payments on it for more than two or three months and they were all out buying homes so you can see how this got real toxic real fast now how did the low interest rates and cheap money um, worsen the situation in and of themselves low interest rates are not a bad thing they can actually be good but when you take loose mortgage guidelines and then throw very low interest rates on top of that you're just adding fuel to the fire it's like pouring gas onto a fire that's already burning because these low rates allowed people to keep buying more and more and more, even though the higher home prices should have driven people out of the market at a at a you know three percent thirty year fixed rate, you could afford a lot more home and When the government first started seeing signs of the mortgage market starting to collapse and the housing market cooling off, all they did is slash rates even further to try to prop this up as long as they could. They did not want the inevitable to happen, which was the bust. Um, if you've ever watched the movie Wall Street, the main character in that is uh, Gordon Gecko, and uh, he's known for telling Sh Charlie Sheen, who's his like understudy over on Wall Street, greed is good. And at first, Charlie Sheen he didn't buy into this idea, 
eventually was convinced, as many bankers on Wall Street became convinced over time, that greed was good. And they knew they were selling and offering and packaging up all these mortgage-backed securities. And all that really means in layman's terms is they were offering loans that they had – that they knew up front had very little chance of survival. They didn't care though because they were making so much money for themselves and for their shareholders and for their stock prices. And Wall Street was no different than Madoff. They just got caught up in it. Um, and all they were doing was creating a stack of cards, a deck of cards that was just waiting to fall. And when it fell, well, we all know what happened. It drove our entire economy into recession. But most of us just sat here and we kept gobbling it up. We knew we were buying more than we could afford. And if we did not personally partake in this uh, mess, we had family members that did or friends. We knew somebody that was buying a bigger home than they ever should have. But guess what? It was fun. And who doesn't like fun? And at the time, nobody thought they could lose. And there were years where nobody was losing because you just flipped your house. You just flipped it. I mean, literally, TV shows were being invented. Well, before I get to the TV shows, well, let me bring that up. TV shows were being invented, like Flip This House. There are television stations today that did not exist 10 years ago that are just there to teach you how to get rich on real estate, teach you how to upgrade your landscaping and, and better your home. Now, many of us lied on our loan applications. Again, I use the word lied lightly. You were enticed to do it. You were actually told to do it. Just state your income. Oh, well, I don't make quite enough to afford this house. Well, then just say you make a little bit more. That was happening. Now, I will pause here for a moment, come back to low VA rates. I have been a VA mortgage loan officer, then a manager, until I started my own company. For the last 15 years, all I've done are VA loans. And the good news is VA loans have never allowed stated income. And as all these account executives and people started coming to our company and asking us to offer all these toxic subprime loans and option arm loans, which I'm going to talk about on the next slide, we didn't do it. So I'm going to toot my own horn here for just a moment and let you know that even though these loans were out there, luckily you're watching a video from a company that we flourished during the mortgage collapse and the, and, and the, the recession. We did more VA loans during those years than we ever had before because VA loans were very safe. But we'll talk about that here in just a moment. Still speaking about what really caused the housing collapse, as I was just getting, it wasn't VA loans. All the other loans did. And I know that sounds biased, but let me tell you, FHA loans, they were not blameless. If you haven't heard, FHA is basically bankrupt. FHA, because of all the money they've lost, has had to increase their fees time and time again. VA fees have not increased ever, at least not since I've been in the mortgage industry since 2000. The VA funding fee and the cost to get a VA loan has never, ever increased before the housing collapse or after. That ought to tell you something. Now, conventional loans, they were no different. Conventional loans and FHA loans started to allow no down payments and very low FICO scores. You could state your income. They all played into this. <laughs> Literally, the VA loans did not play into the housing collapse at all. There's something to take away here. Would the VA be offering loans today that could cause another housing collapse or could cause you pain as a homeowner? They wouldn't, okay? Subprime loans were the worst, okay? Prime means good. Sub means less than or under. So we, were, we, we invented this name, subprime loans, just to create a new type of mortgage where we could go give loans to people that shouldn't have had them. Your credit score was pointless because they were allowing people to get homes that had scores that were so low today you would think it was it was absolutely insane, but it was happening. There were loans where it didn't matter if you were one day in or out of a bankruptcy, the bank would still lend you money. They didn't care. Not employed? Who cares? We're not going to verify your employment. Well, if someone's not employed, how do they plan on making mortgage payments? That's just it. You couldn't lose, so it didn't matter if you made any mortgage payments or not because you were just going to turn around and flip your house before your payment was even due. And I'll give you this. It got to the point where if you weren't even a citizen of this country, you could still borrow money from a U.S. bank, and they didn't care. Now, I'm not going to get into a whole political rant on, on why that's good or bad, but I don't think anybody should be borrowing money unless they have the right to borrow money. But we'll go on from that for right now. Banks just didn't care. That's what I'm getting at. Okay? Option arm loans were absolutely the worst. They were horrible. Um, option arm loans didn't even have that loose of credit or underwriting standards. But what they did allow, they allowed you to make a payment option. You had the option or pick a pay loan is the other thing. You could pick your payment. 
And what everybody was picking was this option to defer their interest. So you didn't even have to make a big enough payment to cover the interest that was owed to the bank. So what the bank was doing is they were tacking the deferred interest every single month onto your balance. So just imagine making payments every single month, but the balance on your home was getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And so what people were actually doing is they were turning their homes into an ATM. They were just withdrawing cash left and right from their home. And people were refinancing left and right. And then six months later, their house was worth another $100,000. So they'd pull out more equity. Now, what the option arm loan is also, why it was horrible, um, the index that it was tied to was very volatile. We have another training, which I'll talk about here on the last slide, um, where you can learn a little bit about how indexes work and how margins work. The margin on the option arm loan was also horrible. It was as high as 5% in some cases. All of this basically means bad loan, but everybody was doing them. Okay. Now, let's talk about the VA hybrid arm loan. I want you to go do your own research, and we do make that easy. As I stated, this video was not about the VA hybrid arm loan as much as it was about what caused the housing collapse. But if you do your own research, there's a couple places that I would suggest going. Go to youtube.com forward slash low VA rates. That's our VA um, loan station. And so, of course, you're going to hear what I want you to hear. But it's very educational and very good trainings. Um, if you want to go to Google and type in VA hybrid truth or just type into your, uh, um, your um, browser, www.vahybridtruth.com um, you'll find a lot of videos in an organized fashion here now I don't care if you just go to Google and type in I want to learn about the VA hybrid arm and, and go to uh, any of our competitors or other third parties out there that are educating you on the VA hybrid arm it's a great loan um, in a nutshell here's what the VA hybrid arm loan has never ever allowed it has ne oops real quick the VA hybrid arm loan has never allowed you to just go out and not verify your credit history Yes, it's true, VA loans do allow for lower than perfect credit scores. Again, this is a benefit or an entitlement earned by the brave men and women of the military. However, they are going to require that you have a reasonable credit history. Um, we're always going to be verifying your job. And if you're purchasing a home or trying to get equity out of your house, your income is also going to be verified. You're never allowed to buy more or refinance more than you can afford with the VA. And I'm not going to give you all the VA guidelines, but I can tell you right now, the VA just never allowed that. Here's what the VA hybrid arm is. It is tied to a very stable U.S. Treasury index. There's videos on that. It has extremely low margins of 2%. Sometimes it is possible to even get a lower margin than 2 And the best thing about the VA hybrid arm loan is it's fully amortized. What that means is it pays your mortgage down. Interest and principal are paid every single month and because the VA hybrid arm loan has such low interest rates okay today we have interest rates as low as 1.75 and 2.25 I will take the second to let you look at this any rates mentioned in this video are available today I don't know what rates are available when you're watching this video but give us a call and we can go over that so what did you learn today first of all you, you better have learned that the VA hybrid loan did not cause the housing crisis as I mentioned, we started doing way more VA loans after the housing collapse than we did before. And VA has not gone bankrupt. VA has not increased their fees. VA loans performed perfectly, just like they were supposed to. Now, your feelings, whatever you were feeling when you first started watching this today and whatever you're feeling now, feelings are not right or wrong. They just are. But what I'm hoping is that you're now feeling more educated so that you can make a decision based on truth and not based on mysteries or myths or lies that you've been told. And if nothing else, you, sh you should know what really caused the housing collapse. We like to end all of our trainings with a quick testimonial. Here's one from Larry D. I would like to thank my representative for his outstanding commitment to ensure my loan process. Thanks you for all your hard work. God bless. I think Larry meant to say thank you. But nonetheless, Larry, we thank you for uh, sharing your feelings with us. And we thank all of you for watching this video today. Um, you can apply online at lowvarates.com. You can call us at 866-869-8272. That's 866-LOW-VA-RATES. If you have any questions, please get in contact with whoever shared this video with you or reach out to us online or by phone. Thank you, and uh, we appreciate you watching.